Hello there. Um, I've just received a, a file, the worksheet file that uh, a student is working on um, portfolio optimization. Um, he encountered the problem, and it looks like it's a simple problem, but may also be case that you are also facing the same problems. Um, okay, let's look at this now. So she has collected data. Uh, this is the weights uh, section here where you have. Uh, for the weights, let me, let me kind of highlight this area or maybe leave it so it's clearer. So uh, she started with two stocks of forming a portfolio with two stocks, and this column records the weights for each of the stocks, and some of these weights should be for the one. And notes that um, expected return is now the uh, product of returns from portfolio worksheet and the weights here yeah so b3 and b4 right so that's correct now wait uh, and then variance formula is also correct now i corrected it actually it was wrong initially it was incorrectly recorded in other words so that's transpose of the weights here and the variance covariance matrix for the two stocks and then again the weights now if I go back, so let me let me show you something. So this is solved basically. So when I did the uh, optimize it using the solver function here, it just uh, correctly. I mean, it gave me the most optimal portfolio weights, and this appears to be A and W. Uh, all of the funds should be invested in A and W, and nothing in Delta. That's most likely because this gives us the minimum variance portfolio if you do that, and most likely this is a result of positive correlation between the two stocks returns and that's the standard deviation that's the standard square root of the variance now if i just click in there and the problem was this let's say when you fetch the data for portfolio variance for example this is what you will see basically empty space there you go to portfolio and this highlighted area is basically a variance core variance matrix area for the stocks and for some reason there is something wrong here, some values missing here, some code missing here, so we must have to look here. But since we don't need this for now, I'll just highlight the variance code variance matrix, which is the 2x2 two two matrix where A, W, N, and delta variance covariance matrix is, is shown. Now notice that this is the same reference to this cell as we had before, but while we highlighted it and then we want to go back to the stock portfolio, yeah, Right there, it's in here now, and you see this. If you just click Control Shift Enter, you get this value. For example. That's because if you notice, this says two stocks C177, D178, and this is actually referring to this sheet, not to this. In this sheet, it should be a, if, if the data is coming from this sheet, this uh, the former bar to show us portfolio, the name portfolio. This is the name of the sheet. But in this case, we are actually referring to the values from this cell, C177, D178. So if we go back down, if we scroll down, we we'll have to wait now, I'll show you where it's referring to. You see, this is where it's referring to. It says two stocks. It is this the sheet name here, two stocks. So we'll go back now. So that has to change to portfolio because it's the name of the sheet from where we are to getting the data is portfolio. So now, don't click enter, control shift enter again. Actually, it's saving it to somebody who shouldn't. Okay, now let me do this again one more time because it's using a slightly different. Yeah, no, it's not working. We we'll have to do it again, but this time we we'll do the control shift enter in the portfolio cell, uh, sheet here. So highlight it again, right? And then now click inside the formula bar and control shift enter. This actually puts the correct name here. It looks like trying to do it manually doesn't work, but it might. But I don't know really like how it works. So that's what it is. I'll just show you the uh, this. Uh, exercise again. I repeat this again with uh, with uh, 
one, two, three, six. Okay. So these are weights again. We have a negative value here, but most likely because of Walmart is being short sold. So that's fine. I don't have some sort of zero point sorry one, but it's zero point nine nine. So it cannot be. Anyway, any number should be fine because uh, so uh, it's a constraint basically in our solar function. I'll show you what it is. It, it, we, we, our investments could sum up 100%, which we could go on. Okay, I'll leave the expected return calculation for you to do. So we we'll start with varying. So I just bring, I'll just bring the formula, copy the formula from the previous exercise and paste it here. All I need to change is now the weights. This is the transpose of weights, which is these which are these, I should say, and I should also highlight the variance for variance matrix for the six stocks from A and W to Walmart. I'll go back to portfolio and highlight all this. Right, this is five by six, yeah, six by six now. Walmart, yeah, A and W to Walmart, A and W to Walmart, yeah, right. Now, click inside here and then without moving into the next sheet, which is press control shift enter that gives us the value for now leave it for now that's because we have to finish entering the data properly so delete all this this is the weights again and highlight the weights again control shift enter so we want to do this control shift enter every time with this mmult function which is an array function and you'll have to just google it Learn more about it. Right, so now it's time to optimize this by right clicking solver, setting the objective, cell, which is this variance, changing the variables, which are the weights, and setting the constraint. So changing it's so the depth, I'll just change it, otherwise, you add it. This. Delete this, and I want this just equal to one. Right, should be more than one or less. Okay, and so done. So it turns out the optimal portfolio whereby we will achieve the most or uh, least variance using these stocks is when we invested 80% of our cash in MW, 9% in Apple, and 11% in Walmart, and nothing in these. That's because these are probably positively correlating with the rest of us our uh, stock fix or fix stock sorry or some other reasons but no, I mean, just stick to this, this result and this is the most efficient portfolio given this returns and friendly selected and I think that, that hopefully will help you to carry on further. Now once you do all of these 30 stocks what you need to do is now pick the standard deviations from each portfolio that we calculated and then put them into a new sheet where you have the x-axis number of shares and in the y-axis standard deviation. So when you have two, two stocks in the portfolio, what will be standard deviation? So before this three stock portfolio, the back it's it's this one here. That standard deviation should come over to this. So you just come here and then click equal three stocks, the two stock, three stocks that one. And this is two stocks. Tap. It's interesting, isn't it? When you increase the portfolio uh, size, actually your variance of the standard deviation is increasing, and it's 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 going against that theory that as you increase the number of stocks, your variance will decline. But you can have that in small number portfolio stocks. I mean, in small portfolios. So it's it's QRT, but as the size increases, you should you see you should get a smaller value. So yeah. It's going down now slowly. It should go down further. So I'll leave it to this tree that we calculate and work out. So this is again lower number. Uh, yeah, it is lower. So 48 is it's yeah, it's, it's, it's slowly declining. So you should see that uh, convex line where line is actually and total risk of portfolio. And so you diversify away the systematic risk and non-systematic risk by adding more stocks. And you have to write a report as well. Anyway, so I'll, I'll stop here and I hope this will be helpful.